Hola. <laughs> good evening, good afternoon, I don't know anymore. Uh, I really thought I was going to share a controversial thought today, um, but after hearing what my fellow influentials said, um, I'm feeling it more as a more neutral conclusion, natural conclusion. Uh, being a trans activist is not enough um, to change our life conditions. Uh, we have been so focused in finding a common ground that we forgot our common point is diversity. There's, that's why the future of activism is to fight not only for our trans needs, but for changing society as a whole. As a trans feminist and community psychologist, I have learned the cruise between multiple oppressions is called intersectionality. That concept ha has been present in most of our lives without even notice. Um, as an example, my mother came from a rural low-income environment, and when my father left us, she became um, a single parent that struggled to, to buy our basic needs because she had no education. That's an intersection of four types of, of oppression. But it is also key to remember that oppression develops different in a specific context. Chile, my country, is probably the safest place to be in trans in Latin America. Even when our gender identity law and is not available yet, at least we are not killed or hit with the same frequency of other countries in a region. But even when social safeness is an important asset to have, it doesn't make it less scary to walk on the nights by the street. Safety does not mean understanding, not even acceptance. In Chile, we live a dictatorship for 17 years, starting on 1973. Um, but that 29 years after, we are still dealing with the consequences of fear, distrust, and individualism. Chile is safer not because we are protected, but because we are so separate, it does not make sense to discriminate us in more active ways. The main problem with that is that conflict may be dangerous. But conflict is also a powerful tool to make impactful change in society. There is no change on stability. And that also applies to activism. Our social fights have been so disjointed in the name of stability that we have been fighting more about our own difference as a movement uh, instead of using them as a tool to amplify our voices. But now, as the ultra-right movements arise around the world, we have the responsibility to make things different. We need to face fascism with strength and unity. We are calling to action. And the question is, what are we going to do? What I choose to do is build bridges between activists so we could scream louder. It's to trust other LGBTI plus movements and work together, but it's also join forces with feminist, environmentalist, educational, and pro-migrant movements, etc. My choice is to leave my fears and as Victoria Cruz, a trans activist from Dominicana, said to me yesterday, leave my own personal ego outside and understand that our role as activists is to activate the inner power everybody has to fight against their oppressions. And just to finish, I want to leave you with this final thought. Rights are not enough. Acceptance is not enough. For me, this is not a fight for being included in. This is a fight for understanding. Understand the value of diversity. That's the challenge. I want you to leave this room with doubts and thoughts of what you hear today, to find yourself in them, 
raising other questions. Because hearing us right here today is not the final step to understand the struggles that we are facing through. It's the first. After this, it's your choice to fight side to side with us and raise our voices together to say, you may hurt us, but you can't beat us. Thank you.